Hey everyone, this is Joshua T. Barglin. I want to thank you so much for being here today. I'm a little unorthodox, uh, or unorganized is the better word, uh, for this broadcast because essentially every time I prepare to do a broadcast lately, I find that it becomes very challenging to get through uh, because of this tremors. But I miss broadcasting, so I'm going to give this a shot again. I literally have tried to do this broadcast four times, and uh, each time has become a struggle. Uh, doing interviews like I used to do has become kind of impossible, unless if I do the whole <laughs> record and stop process or the record and stop method. In other words, I give the person the question, and then I hit record, read the question, get the answer, hit stop. And that's not a lot of fun because the interview broadcast I did was called Conversations. And so as challenging as talking is, communicating and having a conversation is more difficult. And dadgummit, I'm so passionate about this subject because of how it's helped me and the way I've seen it help others that just writing a blog about it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good. I'm not going to pretend. I like to write, but, you know, talking about media literacy and how media can help even <laughs> the people with the greatest disabilities, even people that are part of the underserved communities and so on. And so today, in this broadcast that we're going to do, <laughs> most of the value will probably come in the clips so that, <clears throat> and I'm grateful for technologies like Cut Labs, who I'm uh, going to be using for the clips of this video. I'm super grateful for them. I had a great meeting with their owners and creators the other day, and they seem to really get and understand <clears throat> really what the future of media is all about and so i want to give a shout out to cut labs uh, ai for um just being awesome and so i don't know how entertaining <laughs> this broadcast will be um, but i do want to tell you that this is about the transformative power of media literacy and essentially this is how media can help you if you're somebody that is disabled if you're somebody uh that has just the struggle. And, and so the trimmers, just so you know, I want to show you something. My phone's ringing. And that is one of the things that aggravates my trimmers the most. And so the point of this broadcast, and yeah, we're going to put this on YouTube. So if you want to like and subscribe, I'd be appreciative, even though I self-host on my own website but these clips are going to go on YouTube. Um, <laughs> but that's kind of the why I want to do this broadcast is as is, is painful as it may be. I want to talk about how even those who are disabled or struggle doing some forms of media, there's other alternatives. And one of the most exciting things about the fourth industrial revolution and one of the most exciting things about what's coming um, technology wise and this new world that we're going into which is i mean it's going to be polarizing it's going to be disruptive uh but it's exciting it's exciting for people like myself who saw this coming and prepared and there's people that are way more advanced than i am but that said i'm where i'm at and where i'm positioned um is a good place to be and i'm excited for this future and this future that we're heading into has an opportunity for us all, including the disabled, including the marginalized, including people that are ex-cons or convicts, including former trafficking victims, including the mentally ill. This is an exciting time. And yet at the same time, it, this, this era, this, this world that we're going into is scaring the crap out of people because there's changes happening in ways that is, is quite, I mean, even though we knew they were coming, it, people are freaking out and and I don't want to get into the politics of any of it because here's why for all the fear that is pushed on us 
in my experience, what I was supposed to be afraid of, come to find out, wasn't really that scary. And, uh, you know, typically all the the good promises that people make, those don't really turn out to be as exciting and awesome as promised. And so what I'm learning is that nothing is ever really as good or as bad as it seems. So I'm not going to worry about any of these things that are, people are freaking out about or even overly excited about. Instead, I'm just going to do the best. The, the, I'm just going to do the best I can with what I have. And fortunately for me, what I recognize is that I have a lot of tools at my disposal, even though broadcasting is hard because talking's hard, but in my hands, the way that they move, um, makes it hard to type and to edit. So, but yet there's tools available because I was still able to publish a book and translate it in multiple languages. By the way, shout out to my own book, Media Company in a Box, Independent Media in the Fourth Industrial Revolution. Not only does it have a lot of this information, um, it is a how-to guide. It is a step-by-step -step guide. It is a manual. It is a reference manual. You can go back to it any time. It's constantly updated. In fact, I just updated it yesterday uh, with new content. So the people that bought it, <laughs> you're basically getting a new book because there's more stuff added to it. I'm excited about that. But without these tools available, I don't get to broadcast. I don't get to, to publish. I don't get to mentor. I don't get to teach. And yet I'm getting to do all of that now. Uh, and it's exciting. So without further ado, by the way, my name's Joshua. <laughs> I think I said that. I don't even remember. <laughs> One of the horrific things that's happening with the trimmers is that I completely lose. It was bad before when I would disassociate and lose time. Now I don't dis disassociate like I used to, uh, but I'm still losing time and <laughs> forgetting what I say. And there's, I mean, nothing I can do about it. I can just do the best that I can. And uh, so I don't care how popular this video is. I don't care about any of that stuff. I'm beyond that now. And this is a good place to be. Um, I'm just doing the best I can. And I believe that, you know, whether it, it, you don't need to be religious to believe that we have a creator or have an awesome God that has, that created us for an amazing purpose. That's what I believe. I'm not religious about it, but one of the very core belief systems that I have and really even knowing is that we have an amazing creator that has awesome, awesome things for us if we choose the purpose we were created for and choose to go down that path. And of course, that path is the most scary, frightening, um, <laughs> insecurity-inducing path you can walk. But I'm grateful for it because I've seen miracles every day since I chose to be on this path. And no matter what comes at me, no matter no matter what comes at me i still get to believe that there's something better and the, and there's something more and i still get to be a good steward of what i have and as re, as much as been has been taken from me i feel like i've gained more and uh, even with this like my dreams are coming true even though i spend most of my time in pain now and it sucks. But at the same time, <laughs> these same media tools and these same media principles that I'm talking about are what's allowing me to still make my dreams come true. I'm still getting to speak in front of crowds. I'm still getting to broadcast, even though I'm not necessarily broadcasting myself, I'm getting to be on other people's broadcast. I'm getting to serve and mentor still. And that's what I want to do. I'm getting to teach all over the world. Media Company in a Box is going into universities around the world. That is a huge blessing. That book, this book that I'm talking about, that I wrote, like that happened when I was disabled, not when I was able bodied. Well, I mean, even though I've been, have battled mental illness my whole life, still able to accomplish things and so can you and that's the whole freaking point of this so the transformative power of media literacy first section is understanding media literacy <laughs> some of this media literacy talk 
it is I'm mean, I'm not going to lie to you. It's kind of boring because it's like, well, we learn to spot fake news and we get, but it is important um, to understand and how to look into scams. I mean, right now, I, I can tell you that I we get contacted. Uh, Jessica and I we get contacted by organizations all over the world that want us to be involved in their ecosystems. And there's a lot of just really weird, like there's some really amazing things happening and there's some really just mind blowing scams uh, out there too. And, you know, and to be honest, it requires um, some time and patience to be able to dive in to unwrap some of these scams. And it sucks, it's not a lot of fun. To be honest, it's not, fun having to second guess everything you see and read. I mean, I remember seeing Chili's, like I was reading in Google News that Chili's was closing down and article after article about Chili, Chili's locations closing down and then come to find out a week later that none of it was true. And this is what's being reported on Google News. And then the next week on Google News, Chili's is saying, no, we're not going out of business. I mean, but these were major news sites saying Chili's was closing down. <laughs> it's just like silly stuff like that. Does it really matter that Chili's is going out of business? I don't know, except for the fact that Chili's has the world's best ranch dressing and salsa. <laughs> and when their chips are fresh, they're fantastic. Anyway. All right. Media literacy is the ability to critically analyze, evaluate, and create media content across various platforms. It involves developing a keen understanding of the techniques, narratives, and ideologies that shape the media landscape. By cultivating media literacy, individuals can navigate the vast sea of information with discernment, recognizing biases, challenging established narratives, and actively participating in the creation and dissemination of content. Media literacy also empowers underserved communities. For underserved communities, media literacy serves as a powerful tool for self-expression, advocacy, and social change. That's why I'm media literate, is for that right there. Media controls the narrative, period. Media controls the narrative. So. Whoever has the biggest media prowess is going to be able to control more of the narrative. However, the more of us that step up and step into this place of independent media, independent as in free from control of others, and we just start sharing the truth that we can prove, the verifiable truth, the absolute truth, and if you know what absolute truth is and how you get there, you'll understand that most of the time when we're utilizing media most of the time, it's opinion-based. Like Sometimes we share things based off of what we saw in a meme without actually verifying that it's true. Or sometimes we just assume that everything that we've been taught our whole lives is true, and then we parrot it. Like, oh, yeah, this is true. Like, if you have wet hair and you go out in the cold, you're going to catch a cold. Well, that's actually not true. But yet, some reason, we believe it. It's, I don't even know why we've been told that. But it's not true. And there's a lot of other things like that. I, of course, I learned that from Mythbusters, that it wasn't true. And of course, Myth, Myth, Mythbusters could be full of crap too. So I don't know. Maybe it does give you... <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, because I don't really know the source of that information. But I will tell you, every time I've gone outside in the cold with my hair wet, I have never got a cold, ever, ever. Anyway, um, for underserved communities... Media literacy serves as a powerful tool for self-expression, advocacy, and social change. It equips individuals with the skills to critically examine the representation and portrayal of their communities in mainstream media, enabling them to challenge harmful stereotypes and promote more accurate and nuanced narratives. Media literacy also provides a platform for underserved communities to share their stories, experiences, and perspectives, amplifying their voices and fostering great understanding and empathy within the broader society. I am so excited. Like some of the, the projects that we're working on around the world and getting to teach, I'm getting to learn more stories 
of individuals that haven't had access to the technology or even good Wi-Fi uh, that we have in America. And I'm so inspired by what I see coming out of Africa because you see people, that, for instance, that don't have access to all of the instruments that maybe we have. You know, we have schools that you can get inst instruments and, um, you know, we have access to more things. And then here we are in Africa and I'm seeing people put together rocks and cardboard and and finding two sticks and 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 other other things that are just put together to create a drum set or a homemade guitar and they're jamming and then they're playing pop hits. That inspires me because instead of focusing on what they don't have. They're focusing on what they do have. They're being a good steward of what they've been blessed with. And that's so easy for me in America. Like I'm, I'm disabled and I can't really work. And I, I have these issues, right? But I'm still blessed. I'm still blessed to have access to clean water and to healthcare and to resources like the internet and free trials and all of these other things. And I'm able to get my voice out there i'm able to still be active i am not that imaginative though like to put together a homemade guitar like i haven't had to be stretched in that way and mind you i've had to be resourceful to build what i've built to be able to write the book media company in a box and all of the details and intricacies that are in that yeah i had to spend a lot of time but I was able to take advantage of as much access to the internet as I wanted. That's a blessing. It's a blessing to, to have access to free trials and high-speed internet and do all those other things because ultimately it was not the things that I had the money to pay for that taught me. It was the things that I had to go digging and scrounging for that I had to the, the free trials, the the YouTube training videos, or being caught in this endless click funnel of upsells. Like I had to go through all that for years to be able to learn what I could learn and then volunteering and serving. Like, hey, I don't have the money to pay for a ticket, but I'll sweep your floors. I'll do whatever. I'll pick up the chairs. I'll help with the food. I'll do whatever. I just, I want to show up because I want to learn. And it, and I, but I was blessed because I was living in LA and I was living in San Diego. I was living in Las Vegas. I was living in South Florida. Like I've had access to all of these hot spots where I could do all these things. I am so blessed, no matter what has been taken from me, no matter how much I don't have, I fully recognize all that I have because I wouldn't be here where I'm at without that. And yet I have very little. I have very little to help me compete with the the big players in the industry. I don't care. I don't care. Because I believe in what I'm doing and I know it's going to pay off. But when you think when I think of people in Africa and I think of people in third other third world countries that don't have access to what I do and then seeing what they put together, that inspires me. That inspires me and and it's it's fuel for why I do what I do. And I'm, and I'm so grateful for the opportunity to be able to teach there. Um, but this opportunity is for us all, you know, like no matter where you're at, no matter what resources you have, there is something there for you to use and use in such a way that will, you'll use it. And then you'll, it'll get you where you need to go to be able to get the next thing. Because I also believe no matter where you live, no matter where we live, that the creator that we all have is going to give us with what, what we need when we need it. And I, and I believe that because I've seen it happen in my own life. And it's not like I'm perfect. I'm not a saint. I'm not the furthest thing from a freaking choir boy you've ever met. But I know how blessed I am. And I remember... You know, hearing uh, focus on the things you do have and not what you don't. Be grateful for what you have instead of focusing on what you don't. It's a powerful thing. And you know what? I've never seen anyone use that better than people in third world countries. I'm just resourceful and it inspires me. Okay. Uh, media literacy also breaks down barriers. 
One of the most significant barriers faced by underserved communities is the lack of access to resources and opportunities for personal and professional growth. Media literacy initiatives can help bridge the gap by offering training programs, workshops, and mentoring opportunities or mentorship opportunities that empower individuals with necessary skills to create and disseminate their own media content. By fostering media literacy, underserved communities can reclaim their narratives, challenge dominant discourses, and participate in the shape in shaping the cultural and social landscapes that have historically marginalized them. So let me say that again. By fostering media literacy, underserved communities can reclaim their narratives, challenge dominant discourses, and participate in shop shaping the culture and social landscapes that have historically marginalized them. This means not letting someone else be your voice, be your own voice. You don't need to let other people speak for you. We have put, put I'm going to get in trouble for saying this, but pieces, mm, how do I say this? Mm, mm, mm. There's certain people that have been, I don't know if they're elected or not, but unelected leaders of certain demographics, and uh, all they've done is fatten their pockets. They have not done anything to help the people that they say that they are, these community organizers. And I'm trying to be careful because I like to, you know, pounce on things. <laughs> so, so. But it's disgusting. These people that we've been propped up to, to lead us. And this happens with politicians. It happens with these community leaders and organizers of, again, certain demographics. You know, even the people that are leading... Well, it doesn't matter if it's the part of the civil rights movement. It doesn't matter if it's part of like the LGBT. It doesn't matter if it's a religious movement. Like the, it seems like these elected leaders of, or these leaders that are there really have it only out for themselves. Like they're not really looking out for the people they say they are. And yet we have just surrendered power by going, we need to vote. We need to vote. We need to change. We got. We got to vote this person in, and we expect change. So we we change the tide of things. We put a Democrat in office. We put a Republican in office, and that's the same old crap. We have these other leaders, and we sit back on social media. We sit back in the news, and we let these other people speak for us when we know what's really happening in our community. We know, and yet we let these people talk nonsense and for for most of our lives we've had no voice in this and sure social media gave us a platform to share our opinions but it's not necessarily that we're going to get it out the way that we want sometimes it, al the algorithm if it's blessing you then so be it but then you're still what if you're part of the resistance do you think your comments and opinions are safe on that platform nope not at all. Not at all. Either you're going to get sh kicked off, you're going to get silenced, you'll get shadow banned, or something like that. This is why independent media is so important because when you want to share and you want to use your voice, use it on a platform that you own. It makes it much more difficult to silence you. And then people say, well, how do you promote it? Well, you promote your links, you promote your platform on social media, you promote it in your community. You don't have to be beholden to anyone else. You can complain about censorship, but if you want to go talk smack and say what you want to say on someone else's platform, if, if their platform doesn't want you to say that, guess what? You can't say it. So I can be upset about being kicked off Facebook and Twitter and YouTube and all those other platforms multiple times. I can complain. I think I did initially. <laughs> but that's the right. That's the right. So now I built my own platform and now I say whatever I want. Of course, at the same time, I've learned that maybe I shouldn't say half of the things I used to say. <laughs> so I don't, I don't say it all. Uh, the role of independent media, diversifying the media landscape. Independent media outlets play a pivotal role in fostering a more inclusive and diverse media ecosystem. Unlike mainstream media, which is often driven by commercial interest and beholden to corporate agendas, 
Independent media prioritizes the amplification of marginalized voices and the exploration of underrepresented, underrepresented perspectives. Sorry, speech. <laughs> These alternative platforms provide a space for underserved communities to share their stories, raise awareness about pressing issues, and challenge the dominant narratives that have perpetuated their marginalization, giving voice to the voiceless. My calling card, <laughs> I being a voice for the voiceless is what got me into media, and then the desire to elevate the voices for the voiceless and also to equip the voiceless to have a voice is very, very dear to me and my mission. Independent media serves as a megaphone for underserved communities, amplifying their voices and shedding light on the struggles, triumphs, and lived experiences that are often overlooked or misrepresented in mainstream media. By providing a platform for these narratives, independent media contributes to a more nuanced and inclusive understanding of the diverse tapestry of society. Fostering community engagement. Independent media outlets have often, often have deep roots within communities they serve, fostering a sense of ownership and engagement. This connection allows underserved communities to actively participate in the creation and dissemination of content, assuring that their perspectives and stories are accurately represented. Community-based media initiatives not only provide a platform for self-expression, but also offer opportunities for skill development, capacity building, and economic empowerment, ultimately contributing to the overall well being and thriving of underserved communities. Mm. Let me get some water. <clears throat> so, synergizing the media literacy and independent media. Challenging dominant narratives. By combining the power of media literacy and independent media, underserved communities can effectively challenge the dominant narratives and biases that have historically marginalized them. Media literacy equips individuals with critical thinking skills to deconstruct and analyze media content, while independent media provides alternative platforms to amplify diverse voices and perspectives. This synergy empowers underserved communities to assert their, a their agency, reclaim their narratives, and actively shape the cultural and social discourses that impact their lives. Promoting cultural diversity. And before I get into that, <clears throat> I just want to say that I want to see a world where we celebrate differences because we don't need to celebrate the ways that we're alike. That's freaking boring having something in common, it doesn't really take much effort. <laughs> doesn't grow you as a human being, but to celebrate differences, you learn to appreciate them. You learn to like it because, you know, who wants to live in a freaking echo chamber unless you're scared of the truth or you're scared of opposition. I'm, I, I have beliefs that don't really align with a lot of people. I don't really fit into a category or uh, because I just don't align. Like I, I when I see a masses of people go one direction, I want to go the opposite. Uh, and then just where I'm at and everyone around me is different. I don't have trans friends, gay friends, bi friends, black friends, Muslim friends, atheist friends, Buddhist friends, Christian friends, follower of Christ friends, Baptist friends, Pentecostal friends. It doesn't matter. I think I have a circus friend. Oh, they're retired circus. Anyway, I'm not saying that to brag. I don't even know if it's something to brag about. I'm just saying that my life is interesting. <laughs> interesting people that I get to work with. I love not having to, like, oh, you're. Muslim, oh, you're Christian, oh, you're Buddhist, or oh, you're gay, or, oh, you're bi, I can't work with you. I, no, I, no. One of my favorite things about leaving ministry is that I didn't have to continue to work in ministry. And, what I, and I'm not insulting that because I work in ministry now, but what I'm saying is I wasn't stuck there. 
And uh, I don't want to be stuck in the confines of a, a church or a religion. I want to go where I need to go. I want to help who I want to help. I want to help who needs it without caring about all the other stuff. Yeah, I want to get to know you, but I don't need to judge you based on what your religion is or your sexuality is or you know what your background is or how much money you have like none of that matters like who you are matters your true self matters because that's what i want to see showcased to the world because everything in me wants us to celebrate each other's differences in a globalized world celebrating and, and embracing cultural diversity is essential for fostering a more inclusive and equitable society independent media outlets that prioritize underserved communities play a crucial role in preserving and promoting cultural heritage, traditions and narratives that might otherwise be overshadowed or erased by dominant cultures. Dominant cultural forces, sorry. By combining media literacy and independent media, underserved communities cannot only preserve their cultural identities, but also share with them the broader society fostering greater understanding, appreciation, and respect for diversity. Ultimately, the intersection of media literacy and independent media serves as a catalyst for social change. By empowering underserved communities with the tools to critically analyze and create media content, and by providing platforms for their voices to be heard, these communities can challenge system, systematic inequalities, advocate for their rights, and drive meaningful social, political, and economic change. Independent media outlets and media literacy initiatives have played pivotal roles in various social movements, amplifying calls for justice, equality, and representation, and inspiring collective action toward a more equitable and just society. So this is part of a blog, and in the blog you'll see it in the description. But there's a blog here that has case studies and other things for you. Um, but I'm going to go into this. So community radio initiatives. So this is all. These are case studies about empowering underserved communities. Community radio stations have emerged as a powerful platform for underserved communities to share their stories, pres pre preserve cultural traditions, and address local issues. These grassroots initiatives not only provide a voice for marginalized groups, but also offer opportunities for skill development, media production, training, and community engagement. One notable example is the, I'm gonna caution Nick. I, 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 so when I was researching <laughs> Kochik Broadcast Corporation in Alaska, there's a link for it in the notes which it serves indigenous communities by broadcasting a native language and promoting cultural preservation efforts. By combining media literacy education with community radio programming, these initiatives empower underserved communities to reclaim their narratives and assert their cultural identities. So there's a link to their website there and it's worth checking out. Um, even in Minnesota, so I live in a town called Northfield and there's a local radio station here. And it does all kinds of things for local empowerment. It's amazing. And, and you can just search in your town. There's always going to be something. There's always a community group. And if there's not, it's not that hard to start one. If you need help, you can reach out to me anytime. Uh, this one's great. Participatory, pr pr participatory video projects. They have gained traction as a powerful tool for empowering underserved communities. These initiatives involve training community members in video production techniques, enabling them to document their lived experiences, share their perspectives, and advocate for their rights and needs. Organizations such as Insight Share have facilitated participatory video projects in various parts of the world allowing marginalized communities to amplify their voices and drive social change by community empowerment and grassroots advocacy. Give me just a second. One thing that's not on here, um, I wanna add, I think 
one of the most powerful things somebody can do is start a podcast, but not a long form podcast, not one that has like five seasons to it. Do video series like pick. So you want to, if you're wanting, if you're part of a marginalized group or an underserved community, create a video series that what are the key things? Like what are, what do people need to know? Like, why should they care? Create a video series on why people should care. Because let me tell you something. I've done over 40 interviews and special content creations for a demographic of people that no one even knows about. Uh, civil commitment. Not the celebrity version, but the the sex offender version or people who have been accused of sex crimes, sex crimes, but have never um, been charged. And some of them are locked away 30 years and not ever had a trial. It's screwed up. And so, but what made it effective is, and it was hard. It was very difficult at first to get attention for this, but the most effective thing I did as far as getting, drawing attention to this type of video, which again is not popular. No one wants to watch these videos. People don't really want to watch prison interviews um, with sex offenders. It's not a popular topic. I don't even know if I can say this. Well, I can on my platform. It's probably going to get in trouble on the others. I don't care. Anyway, um, this is why I self host because I'm going to get kicked off of the. Anyway, but what worked were video series. Do a special, like a focused area. Boom, 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 boom. Series of four, series of seven, series of eight. Boom. And what that did was create a, like it was it created different connectivity points. So it wasn't a hot topic with SEO. So if I create multiple series on this subject I want to draw attention to, I'm going to have much better luck than if I was just to, you know, create a podcast on civil commitment and then do 10 seasons. It works much better for me to section things off. It just does. It that that is, I, I my content success has come greater with video series than anything long form. So I and there's I could spend an hour talking about the reasons why and I won't. Um, but that on top of that, it's just it's a better way to do it in my opinion uh, to create content. If you want to do a podcast instead of long form, do multiple series, which is like multiple podcast as opposed to one. And I mean, there's a lot of reasons why, but one of the biggest ones for me is that I don't feel like I'm being put in a box where this is all I can talk about. Video series allows me to get in a box and then get out. But that box is always there, hosted on my platform where there's six or seven different video series. So. You can do something similar if you have questions about that and want to take a deeper dive, reach out to me. No problem. Okay. We're almost done here. And this is my greatest area of passion when it comes to media literacy, youth media programs. Investing in media literacy, <clears throat> investing in the media literacy and creative potential of youth from underserved communities is crucial for fostering a more inclusive and equitable future. Youth media programs such as those offered by organizations like The Lamp, learning about multimedia project, provides hands-on training in various media production techniques, including video, audio, and digital storytelling. These initiatives not only equip young people with valuable skills, but also offer a platform for self-expression, personal growth, and community engagement. By combining, by combining media literacy education with creative outlets, these programs empower underserved youth to find the voices, challenge stereotypes, and become agents of positive change within their communities. Conclusion. Let's see here. I don't want to read the conclusion. <laughs> do my own conclusion. Anyway, there's so much here. And um, I know I'm, hey, I can promote my book. This is my content. I wrote the book. I worked my butt off on it. In the book, 
it's like choose your own adventure because there's links to take you other places to study. There's videos. Um, if you don't like videos of me, you don't have to watch them, but they're there <laughs> at the beginning of each chapter. But it's up to you. And then you can buy it anywhere. Uh, you can Barnes and Noble, Amazon, uh, Draft the Digital has a bunch of platforms it's on, but also it's free at libraries. So if you don't have the money, it's free at libraries. There's no excuse. And then also, I'm teaching um, June 4th, I think it is. We, it's a Tuesday. Um, the Tuesdays of June at 2 p.m. Central, I am teaching a full course, basically teaching the, my book. But it's a four-part course, two hours each. You can come in person or it's online for free. There's going to be people from all over the world there. There's no charge. It's free. And you will learn so much your head will explode. So I'm hoping to make it in a really fun and exciting way um, because there's a lot of content there. But it's valuable content. And it's content that will dramatically change your business. If you're an entrepreneur, it's going to blow your freaking mind. If you're a junkie, a former junkie, and you know, all the bad things like I was, you may see it as a life a life fest or a lifeboat. For those of you who already have a business, you're going to be really happy because you're going to be able to add additional revenue streams to your existing business without spending another dime. Blow your mind. Media company in a box. Independent media in the fourth industrial revolution. Check it out. Like I said, free at libraries, Amazon, Draft Digital, not free, but that book will always be updated and uh, there for you to use. So my name is Joshua Tyler Berglund. I go by Joshua T. Berglund. Some people call me the world's mayor, but um, I'm grateful that you're here, wherever you're watching from, hopefully from my platform. But if you're watching on YouTube, subscribe and like just because that's what you're supposed to do there <laughs> and if i don't say that i don't think they show my video to anyone which is so silly anyway uh much love y'all thank you so much for watching <laughs>